our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade but all learners are more than welcome to, do, to join in and explore along with us. So let's get started. But before we begin, let's take a quick minute to do a little bit of some of our mindfulness breathing. Remember, mindfulness is really, can be very helpful when it comes to just clearing our mind and setting our intentions, all right? So I'm gonna close my eyes. You're welcome to leave your eyes, your eyes open. And I'm gonna take deep breaths in and out. In and out. Since it's Monday, we just had an awesome weekend. I want you to think for a minute about something you're thankful for that happened this weekend. Think about something positive that you did. Let those feelings of thankfulness and positivity fill you up all the way from the tip of your head, the bottoms of your feet. Continuing to take those deep breaths in and out. And as we start off on another awesome week, I want you to think about all the positive things that are going to happen this week. All the great learning that is going to take place, all the fun, all the happiness that's going to happen this week. I want you to think about that. Deep breaths in and out. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. So taking just a few minutes, once a week, every day, just to take a minute to breathe, to think and set your intentions can be super helpful, right? Just to kind of give your brain a little reset. Right now we are working so hard and doing so many different things that our brains are just constantly in motion, right? And they can get filled up with so much information that sometimes we forget things or we just get very confused because there's so much going on. So a little bit of mindfulness can really help to slow things down, calm our bodies and get us back into the flow. All right, but on to what we're learning about today. This week, we're going to be discussing nonfiction texts. Nonfiction texts are texts about real things. So we're talking about people, we're talking about places, we're talking about things, right? So nonfiction is informational books, right? They're teaching books quite often that tell us different things. We use them when we do research projects or um, when we want to learn about new things. So this week specifically, we're going to be talking about text features and how text features can help us to understand nonfiction books. Text features are really awesome clues that we find in our books that can help to add to the meaning. Right? When we do some of these books, they present so much information. It can be kind of overwhelming. So utilizing text features that we find in books can be really helpful to close in on the main idea of the text and really begin to understand what that text is trying to teach you about. So that's what we're going to be studying all this week. And I think you're going to be really excited. So are you ready to jump into today's lesson and begin to learn about some of these text features? Let's jump on in. Nurse Jason, would you mind checking the temperature of the patient down in room two again? That would be so helpful, thank you. And Nurse Jackie, would you go down and check the reflexes of the patient in room six? Awesome, let me know what you find out. Thank you. Oh. Hi there, you guys must be our new trainees, right? Well, awesome, I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Dr. St. Louis, and this is the text features floor at the Nonfiction Hospital. 
We're so happy that you're here today because we are swamped with new patients and we can use all the extra help that we can get. Here on the text features floor, our main job is to diagnose patients with the text features that they can need, use to better understand nonfiction text. So before I send you in to start seeing some patients, let's go over some of the more common text features that we prescribe here at, on the text features floor. So the first one that we prescribe is captions. Now captions are an explanation near a photo or image that gives more information about what you're seeing. So the reason why someone would need captions is if there are pictures that aren't quite clear, right? So they might not understand what the picture is trying to tell them. And so the captions can help them to better understand what the picture would mean. For example, here we see a picture. And I see clouds and really just like the tops of a lot of green trees. It can be kind of hard to understand what that picture is trying to tell me. So there's a caption that goes with this picture and it says, the Amazon rainforest covers more than 2.1 million square miles, 5.4 million square kilometers. So it's showing me, right, that this picture is showing me this vast amount of rainforest and it's telling me in the caption, how big that truly is, all right? So captions offer a little bit more explanation associated with pictures. Let's look at another one. All right, gotta find a good one for you. Here we go. Here we can see a man, right? And he's got this fish. So the caption says, spear fishing from a canoe. So it's explaining to us what we're seeing in the picture. So captions are very helpful. We, we diagnose those a lot. The next one is headings. Now headings are the main title of an article or page in a text. Headings really help people to understand what certain articles or pages are going to be all about. Helps them to narrow the focus just a little bit more before they start reading. So some examples are, this page is all about canine care. Oh, this page is all about walkies through time. <laughs> Distinguished dogs. So each of these headings helps us to know about what we're going to read on this page. So patients might have a really hard time understanding what pages are going to be about if they don't have the headings. Very important. All right, next up, the elusive index. All right, so this is found in the back of a text and it lists the topics included in a book and the page numbers where they can be found. Now, this can come in really handy, all right? If you are having trouble finding specific information on a topic, having an index is so helpful because you can look at the back of the book, look for the page, look for the topic that you were searching for and find the page number, and that helps you to go find it. Right? It really cuts down on time versus having to read through the entire book just to find that information that you were looking for. They're super great if you have to do a research project. So helpful. An example of this, we can see right here. Right? There is an index here. So it tells me that I can find the sloth bear on page four. So if I was writing a report on the sloth bear, it would be really helpful for me to go to the index, look for that, and then I can flip right to page four and I can see the sloth bear, okay? If I didn't have the index, I might waste a lot of time reading through page after page after page after page, trying to find that information. And by then I've got so much other information in my brain, it can be really hard to narrow things down. So and having an index can be really helpful. It's a very good diagnosis. Next up, we have charts and graphs. 
Now these are images that organize data in a way that makes it easier to comprehend. A lot of the time when we see nonfiction text, there are lots of numbers and um, information and data that's associated with nonfiction books. And that can be really hard for some people to digest and understand. So using charts and graphs can really help the reader to understand what is being presented to them. For example, here we see a chart that shows us the different heights of bears, right? So it shows us that, right, we've got the moon bear, the spectacle bear, a panda bear, and a polar bear, right? And it shows us how tall they can get to be. So we've taken this information that was presented to us in the book, right, that just said, oh, this bear is this tall, this bear is this tall, this bear is this tall, look, here's some more bears. And now, it has shown us, right, in picture format with the heights written out. Much easier for me to, under, to understand and digest and also to be able to compare different bears. So these can be super helpful. Next, we have a table of contents. And tables of contents are lists at the beginning of a book that lists all of the topics um, and on what pages they can be found, all right? So this is something that we find at the beginning and it shows us usually lists the headings of all of the different pages that we can find. So just like our index is really helpful to finding specific words, the table of contents can be really helpful if maybe we wanted to learn about a certain topic. We could find that in a book right away. So an example of a table of contents is here. So it shows us the page numbers and it shows us the title, right? The heading that's for that page. So home sweet home, earth in trouble, making choices. And it shows us at the end, there's a glossary and index. So this can be really helpful if I'm trying to find specific pages. Next, we have bold print. Now, bold print is words or phrases that are written in a different color or are thicker to print or, or are thicker, a thicker print to emphasize importance. So bold print, those are those words that kind of stand out. They look different than others. Now, we don't always see bold print. Sometimes we see underline, right? Sometimes we see words in italics. Those are those ones that are slanted on the side. But different kinds of prints really help readers to understand what the important words are. Nonfiction texts present lots and lots of information. So having different kinds of text to point out those important words can be really helpful to readers. So let's find an example of that. Let's see here. I know there's one in this book. Here we go. So here we see some underlined words, right? Products, fuel, material. So underlining in those words points out to the reader and says, hey, I'm important. But there's also bold words. Let's see if we can find some bold words in this one. Come on, flip too far. So bold words, right, point out important topics. This one also has some. Right, they're bolded, they're a thicker flattering. So that's just pointing out that these words are really important words, okay? Now, along with those bold words, you also see the glossary. Now, glossaries are found at the back of a book and they list the important words in a text and their definitions. So this one can be really tricky to diagnose because we have that index. And the index is also at the back of the book. The purpose of the index is to tell us the list of those important words or topics and the page number that they're found on. Glossaries tell us the definition of words. So when we look through books and we find those bolded, underlined, italicized words, right here we see 
colonies. If I don't know what that word means, I can go to the back, to the glossary, and I can look it up, okay? And I can find it, and I can say, oh, oh, that's what that means. And so it gives me a little bit of a clear way to understand what those words in a text mean. So glossary and index, those are often confused. So we have to be really careful when looking at the symptoms patients have to be able to correctly diagnose. And last up, images. Images are pictures, drawings, or graphics that helps readers to visualize information. So again, nonfiction texts present us with lots and lots of information. Unlike a um, fiction text that has the pictures that match, it's a little bit harder when it comes to nonfiction text. So we see lots of images that help to represent the things that we're talking about. So in this book, all about dogs, we see different pictures of dogs doing different things. So it's helping us to create this visual component that goes along with the information that we're reading about. All right, so your job today. I have eight patients that I have had very little time to try and diagnose. So I'm hoping that you're can, you can help me figure out what they need so that I can get them their prescriptions and get them out of here real fast. Do you think you're up to the challenge? I hope so. Are you ready? All right, to review, we have the glossary, right? Found at the back of the book, tells us the definitions of important words. Images, those are the pictures and graphics that help readers visualize information. The index is also found at the back of the book. It lists the topics and the page numbers for those um, where those words can be found or those topics. Bold print, right? Our words or phrases that are in a different color or thicker print to help emphasize their importance. The table of contents. It's a list at the beginning of a book that shows all the topics and on what pages they can be found. Charts and graphs are images that organize data in a way that makes it easier to comprehend. Headings are the main titles of an article or page in a text. And captions, an, an explanation near a photo or image that gives more information about what we're trying to learn about. All right, so I have some patients that I need your help with. So let's start with patient number one. Patient number one. Patient name, Jack Johnson. Patient birthday, August 28th, 1995. Patient symptoms. Jack has been suffering from not knowing where he could find information on specific subtopics. Hmm, what should his prescription be? What does he need? All right, let's think. He doesn't know where he can find the information on specific topics. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? You think table of contents maybe? Let's look. It's a list at the beginning of the book that lists all of the topics and on what pages they can be found. Finding information on specific topics. All right. Will you take this down to room two? Thank you. One down, next up. Patient number two. We have Sophie Sears, born January 14th, 1989. Symptoms. Sophie has been complaining of not understanding what a picture is trying to show her. Hmm. What can we do to help Sophie? So she has these pictures, but she doesn't know what they're trying to show her, or tell her. You think, you think we should give her the caption? Let's check. 
Mm -hmm. Captions. An explanation near a photo or image that gives out more information about what they're seeing. You're right, I think that can help Sophie. Take this down to room one and give it to Sophie right away. Thank you. Oh, you guys are knocking this out. Next up, patient number three. Here we have Johnny Klein. Birthday, December 5th, 1963. Symptoms? Johnny has been suffering from not identifying the important words and phrases in a text. Ooh. Hmm. All right, he can't identify the important words or phrases. Hmm, what can help him? The, the bold print you think can help him? Bold print. Words or phrases that are written in a different color or a thicker print to emphasize importance. I think you're right. Take this down to Johnny in room four. Thank you. All right, patient number four. Name, Herman Beep. Birthday, October 31st, 1983. Symptoms, Herman has suffered from not knowing what the main topic of a text is about. Hmm, he doesn't know what the main topic of a text is about. Hmm. What was that? Headings? Headings, the main title of an article or page in a text. He doesn't know what the main topic of a text is about. You're right. Hey, get this down to Herman in room six, step. Thank you. You guys. You are so helpful. I am so happy that you are here. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't. All right, we've got four more patients to go. Let's do this. Patient number five. Name, Kyle Yates. Birthday, July 18th, 1945. Symptoms. Kyle has been suffering from not being able to define keywords in a text. Okay, so Kyle. Can't define the keywords. Hmm. What's gonna help him to define words? I'm thinking the index. No? What do you think it should be? The glossary, why, why the glossary? Oh, you're right. Good save. The glossary gives us definition of keywords. Index just tells us the page numbers of where we can find them. Whew. You caught me on that one. Good job. Take this down to room 12, please. All right, patient number six. Let's keep this going. Patient name, Joan Higgins. Patient birthday, April 18th, 1975. Patient symptoms. Joan has struggled to find where certain words can be located in a text. Okay. All right, so she's kind of, hmm. All right, let's see. I only have a few prescriptions left. So, um, images, charts and graphs, and the index. So which of these is going to be able to help Joan find where certain words can be located? You're right, this is the index. Good thing I didn't already give this out. Oh, you guys are awesome. I need this to go down to Joan, please. Thank you. Patient number seven, Barry Newsom. Patient birthday, August 16th, 1972. Patient symptoms, Barry is suffering from not being able to visualize a text. Hmm. Visualize a text. What's going to help him to visualize the text? Visualize. Well, when I think visualize, I think pictures. You're right. Images. He needs images. 
Ugh. Get this to Barry as quick as you can. Thank you. All right, our last patient of the day. Patient name, Lindsay Flora. Birthday, March 27th, 1995. Lindsay suffers from not being able to easily understand data presented in a text. Oh, that's a tricky one. <sighs> Understanding data. What's gonna help her to understand data? You, you think it's charts and graphs are gonna be able to help her? Charts and graphs, images that organize data in a way that makes it easier to comprehend. You got it. Oh, and you get this down to Lindsay as soon as you quit. Okay. So appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I am so glad that you guys were here today. Without you, we would be a mess here on the text features floor. You have really saved us and helping to make sure that our patients got what they needed to solve their problems. And I'm so thankful for you. You know, you guys are always welcome here on the text features floor. We can always use help making sure that our patients get what we need. I think you've got a bit of a knack for identifying text features. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Teaching in Room 9. I hope that you guys learned a bunch and we'll be sure to see you back next time. Until then, have a great day. Bye everybody. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.